Hello everyone, and welcome back to Real Time, where we talk about the movies we like. And the ones we don't. I'm Tyler. And I'm Molly. Now today, we're going to be looking at the the current four Ghostbuster movies we have <laughs> leading up to our review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah, mm-hmm. New Ghostbusters movie, so... Not Ghostbusters Afterlife. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Why am I oh. getting <laughs> titles mixed up lately? I'm, yeah. It's a bit goofy of me. It's okay. I knew what you meant. I didn't even catch that. I was just like, yeah, New Ghostbusters. Um, but anyways, yeah, New Ghostbusters movie. So, you know, pretty exciting, I guess. And this year also happens to be the 40th anniversary of the original Ghostbusters, so... We're going to start with that. Also, it's the first movie, so why would we not start with that? We have to start at the beginning. Yeah, it's not like we're talking about Deadpool 2 or Shrek 2. we got to start with the, be- with the first one. Yeah, mm-hmm. Got to start at the beginning. So, the first Ghostbusters was directed by Ivan Reitman and written by Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, with Rick Moranis doing some uncredited work on the side. Ghostbusters was actually originally a TV show featuring two guys and a gorilla, but that has absolutely nothing to do with this. Though, to use the name, they had to, you know, uh, pay, pay those guys. So we have this Ghostbusters, and nobody really no- cares about that other Ghostbusters anymore. Well, it kind of sounds cool, though. Two guys and a gorilla. Were they also hunting ghosts? Maybe? That sounds pretty rad. Anyways, we have our very fun cast in this movie, starring, of course, Bill Murray as the hilarious Dr. Peter Venkman, Dan Aykroyd as Dr. Ray Stance, Sigourney Weaver as Dana Barrett, their first client in Ghost Busting, the late Harold Ramis plays Dr. Egon Spengler, Rick Moranis plays Louis Tully, Dana's, uh, well, he kind of has a crush on Dana, and he lives down the apartment from her. But, uh, yeah. Annie Potts, Potts plays Janine Melnitz, their secretary, the Ghostbuster secretary. William Atherton plays Walter Peck, the man with no dick. Mm-hmm. That's how he is referred to, yes. That's, how, that's what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. Ernie Hudson plays Winston Zedmore, the newest hire of the Ghostbusters. Uh... And we also get Reginald Vale Johnson playing a cop. We, we'll get to see a lot of that in his career, whether it's uh, this, Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Family Matters, or Avengers Endgame. The man just has a thing for law enforcement. Yeah, he just played cops really well, I guess. Hey, as long as he's getting paid, I don't think he's too upset about that. I wouldn't be either, yeah. So, Ghostbusters. The original, the classic... The, you know, there there's really not a whole lot we can say about Ghostbusters, to be honest, that no one else has said. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, like you said, it came out 40 years ago, and it's considered a classic. Everyone knows, you know, who you're going to call. Ghostbusters, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, so it, it's been talked about a lot. We're going to do our best, though, because, well, that's what, that's what we do. It's, it's what we do. Mm-hmm. So, first off, uh, what do you think of this first movie? Um, I mean, it's a classic. What can I say? It's funny. Um, I like the the ghost hunting. It's uh, it's it's quite quite enjoyable. Yeah, on this uh most recent re- rewatch, which we're we're recording right after we watched the movie, so still pretty fresh in our in our minds. Uh, just watching. Uh, Dr. Venkman go, do his thing it makes me think it, it, it uh, really makes me uh, think about how I got so much of my dry humor from yeah mm-hmm. um, yeah it's pretty funny I didn't watch this a lot um, whenever I was younger or throughout my life really but um, I can appreciate it it's a good movie yeah it's a uh, it has it has a whole lot of stuff to enjoy in it. It has comedy. It has horror. It has, um, it has some fun action. It has really interesting and funny characters. I already said funny, but you know it bears repeating. Mm-hmm. And um, it 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 has ghosts. It sure has ghosts. And busting. Oh yeah, lots of busting. Lots of ghost busting. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
Sorry. <laughs> so, um... So... The, the first ghost that they uh, actually bust, Slimer, was actually uh, supposed to be based off of John Belushi. Or his spirit, anyways. Oh. I didn't really get that. Yeah, the character was uh, inspired by his likeness. It was supposed to be some sort of parody, but not really meant maliciously, given that uh, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi were friends while Belushi was still alive. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad they were friends, yeah. Um, also, uh, before Ernie Hudson was cast in the role of Winston, uh, Eddie Murphy was actually considered for the role. Mm-hmm. I, I like Eddie Murphy. But uh, he uh, either didn't want it or want to do it or couldn't do it, so uh, the role was pretty pretty uh, cut down in the final product. Mm. Yeah, kind of unfair that it was cut down so much. Yeah, it's a shame. He's I, I really like Winston. He's uh, he, he's the everyman character who really has no. No grasp on any of of the, of the ghost stuff, other than what he's learning on the job. So it's really interesting to see how he uh, how he com- comes to to deals with with all this stuff. Yeah, he kind of just rolls with it. He's like, okay, I'm hunting ghosts. All right, as long as I get paid, I don't care. Which is pr- pretty much what uh, Winston, what Winston said is in the movie too. So it works out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, some people on the inter- internet like to claim that Walter Peck, a.k.a. Dickless, was completely right in uh, in his actions. Uh, no, 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 he wasn't at all. Yeah, we say no. First off, so... So, Dickless here claims that he's tr- he's trying to uh, sort past all, the, all, all of what he sees in the media, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, but... What are what are you looking for? It's true that the Ghostbusters are carrying nuclear reactors on their back, but that's not a concern for the EPA. That's for the Nuclear Regulatory Committee. That's not your that's not your area of expertise, there, buddy. That why are you here? Yeah, buddy, why are you here? Second of all, Peck is well. He he clearly has a bone to pick when he comes into the office because he immediately starts questioning Venkman's, uh, you know. His qualifications. He has two doctorates for one, one in ghost stuff and one in psychology. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guy clearly knows what, something about what he's talking about. Yeah. Now, he- true. Not true. Venkman st- starts acting like a jerk back, but not to sound childish, but Dickless started it. That is true. Yeah, I think so. Number three, that when when he was trying to shut down the. Uh, shut down their, their grid they 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 kept telling him over and over again that this is this is not safe it's, it's gonna blow up and what happens it wasn't safe and it blew up so dickless decides he's gonna throw them in in jail because he doesn't like what happened even though it was his fault it was entirely his fault <laughs> and it, he didn't bring you know uh he, he didn't br- bring a, a guy decked out in uh uh, in uh, in chemical gear or stuff like that to shut it down. He brought a guy in a hoodie and a, and a hard hat and a cop. He knew he wasn't going to find anything. He was just being a dick for no reason. Yeah, big jerk. So, point is, Peck is just a petty little turd who wants to act a big man because he's the tiny man in, in his office, so he wants to flex what little power he has with his tiny little wiener. Uh, okay. I thought he didn't have a wiener. True true <laughs> nice v- uh, very colorful language I try I try <laughs> William Atherton actually has a knack for this kind of character because he also played uh, a similarly uh, petty character in d- in the first Die Hard movie well the second one too but eh. yeah funny thing though Richard Val Johnson was also in the second Die Hard in addition to the first in this movie so it's kind of funny it is kind of funny um, I didn't know he was the that guy in Die Hard. He was um, he was the the, the TV anchor Thornburg. Oh yep, mm-hmm. he was a jerk in that one too. Yeah, I was like trying to remember, but yeah, you're right, you're right. 
so Peck, not a great guy. Not a not a, not a very likable character, but in the way that you're not supposed to like him. Yeah, you're definitely not supposed to like this guy, and uh, he does his job. So good on him, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so, Ernie Hudson was, uh, well, originally he wasn't really a, a fan of uh, his, his role in this first movie, given that his, he was, his character was originally introduced on page eight before, uh, before moving to halfway through the movie, mm. where he would be introduced in the movie proper. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm assuming he was it originally supposed to be, yeah, like, much earlier. Well, yeah, that was Obviously. what I was talking about with Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a shame. Uh, he's he's also on basically none of the posters. Yeah, um, I I'm trying to recall posters in my mind. He's um, he's not on most of them. Yeah, you're probably right. I just can't really re- remember. I can't talk either. I can't remember. He's also billed eighth in the credits below William Atherton. Uh, and Rick Moranis. Mm, yeah, that seems a little unfair. But thanks, thanks to the fans, he's you know the the studios haven't forgotten him. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at least he came back for the second movie. And for Afterlife in 2016, but none of the surviving Ghostbusters uh, cast play their original characters in that one. Yeah, I haven't seen that one yet, so. We'll get there. Oh, we're we're gonna watch it soon. So yeah, probably uh, in a couple days. We're we're recording these things right after we watch each movie because it'll make things easier for us in the long run with these uh, longer reviews where we're doing three or four, six or ten movies in one go. Ten movies. I'm just throwing out numbers. Sounds like a lot. Okay. What? You good, homie? Yeah, I'm just trying to sit comfortably. It's hard whenever you have a baby inside of you. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I assume so. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. You don't know what it's like. So there were some other actors considered for uh, these roles before we got the Ghostbusters we know today. And I just want to say I'm fine with the, with the world we live in now where these are our Ghostbusters because... I don't think very many people could have uh, captured that same chemistry and just energy in the roles as these four guys could have. Well, who were uh, some of the other options? Uh, John Belushi was the first choice for Venkman, but he died before the before a production on movie began. Mm, that's unfortunate, but but yeah, then he was unable to do it. Obviously, I think if anyone other than Bill Murray, John Belushi would have been a great uh, cho- choice too. Yeah, I agree, but um, I am a big Bill Murray fan. Chevy Chase and Steve Gutenberg were also approached. Um, Chase turned it down, and because the original script was darker than the than the final product, and Gutenberg had scheduling conflicts with the Police Academy movies. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, and Tom Hanks were also considered too. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, those could have been good choices. Um, but I'm still going to stand by Bill Murray was the correct choice. Yeah, I agree. He, I'm, He's iconic in there. Whenever you, well, I should only speak for myself. Whenever I think Ghostbusters, I know Bill Murray is like the first actor that pops into my mind. Christopher Lloyd, Christopher Walken, Jeff Goldblum, and John Lithgow were also considered for the role of Egon Spengler before Harold Ramis took it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Uh... Like I said, Eddie Murphy was approached, but he had to turn it down due to the filming commitments of Beverly Hills Cop. Mm, yeah, I understand. Gregory Hines, Yafit Koto, and Reginald Vell Johnson were also offered the role. Uh, Hines turned it down to star in The Cotton Club, and Vell Johnson was, well, he would later be, be in the movie as someone else. Yeah, I guess he didn't want the role. Or maybe he was busy. I don't know. John Candy was approached for the role of Lewis before Rick Moranis was uh, cast. I would have liked that. That would have been interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah, John Candy's pretty funny. Uh, J- Candy wanted to portray the character as an odd German man who owned dogs, uh, but Ivan Reitman and Dan Aykroyd didn't like this idea because there's already so much dog imagery they didn't want to bring themselves to 
replace their character with Candy's interpretation of it. Yeah, I see why they turned him down, yeah. Julia Roberts, Denise Crosby, Daryl Hannah, and Kelly LeBrock read for the role of Dana Barrett before Sigourney Weaver was cast. Mm-hmm, interesting. I know some of those names. Some of them? <laughs> yeah. One. <laughs> hmm. Gozer, this is one that is interesting, was originally going to take the form of a man in a business suit and would have been played by Paul Rubens. Oh, I, I could get behind that. That would have been, that would have been, that would have been weird, but, eh. That would have been weird, but I think I would have liked it. Uh, originally, Ray Parker Jr. refused to do the theme song because he didn't know how to, you know, have the title in the song. Yeah, but then I guess he thought, hey, why don't we just have some people shout it? <laughs> uh, no, actually, he uh, it, it was due to some sort of a commercial sequence he saw, and it inspired him to uh, do it. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who are you going to call? Okay. Ghostbusters! Overall, this movie is a is absolutely funny, but there are some things that I that 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 I really don't like about it, though. Like what? I don't care for the character of Lewis. I don't think he's very funny. Like I'm laughing at him, not you know with him, and I just don't he he just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, um, I agree. He's I think. Um, if he wasn't in the movie, um, it would still be, like, perfectly fine without him. You know? Does that make sense? I mean, I wouldn't say that. He serves uh, a, a, a pr- the purpose of getting uh, this this other dog in, in the movie to be the uh, the key master. I guess, yeah. That, that could have been anybody. Yeah, yeah, you're, tr- you're right. Or that could have just been one dog. I don't know. I don't know. I also don't really care for the treatment of Winston's character. Yeah. I mean, we've kind of already talked about that, yeah. We did, but I, I want I want to say a little bit more. Go I, ahead, yeah. I I feel like his uh his perspective as being the uh the more working class guy because these other three guys are college doctors, you know. Mm-hmm. They're a little bit more academic. A little bit more academic, you know. Venkman over here has tenure. He does whatever he wants. He's shocking uh this mm-hmm. this uh student, and he's hitting on another in his first scene. They're, th- th- these aren't what you would call the most normal people. Definitely not, no. Winston, on the other hand, he is. He's just some guy who came off the street. He's looking for a job. He's willing to believe anything th- these uh, people are telling him for a paycheck. And honestly, yeah, I would too. Yeah, I know. I mean, we can all relate mostly because, yeah, he, he just wants to work. He just wants some money. So, yeah. It's the '80s. It's New York. Uh, he's he's got to get get his bread somehow. Oh yeah, that's true. He he needs a job. So yeah, I feel I I would have liked to see a a, a lot more Winston than we actually got because a lot of the times he's pushed off to the background. He's off to the side here while the uh, while the three main guys are are doing their thing and and talking and stuff. And they are funny guys. Don't get me wrong. I I'm not. Uh, I don't dislike the fact that we're getting so much time with him. I just want more time with Winston. Yeah, I do agree with you. I think his character was treated uh, very unfairly. Although we do get more of him in the second movie. And honestly, Ernie Hudson's cameo in 2016 is my favorite of all the original Ghostbusters. Because it is pretty funny, despite that movie not really being that much at all. Mm. Well, I'll have to watch that later. And... I haven't. Well, we haven't seen Frozen Empire, of course. Obviously. But. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, stall for a second. Um. Okay. I think uh, the Frozen Empire comes out uh, April. It came out a little over a week ago. Oh, <laughs> I'm behind on the times. I don't know what date it is. Um, but anyway. Yeah, um, I mean, maybe he has a bigger part. Frozen Empire, yeah. I, I, said, I got this one right. Okay, <laughs> good. Um, what, what, what are you going to say? Uh, I was saying, yeah, I, I haven't seen that one, so I don't know how big of a role the original Ghostbusters are in that one, but 
I hope they don't take up too much time from this new cast because I like them. Um, yeah, they're all right. Um, yeah, and like, and and Afterlife, the uh, the original Ghostbusters don't take up too much time. They mostly just appear at the end, which is fine. I, I know Ray shows up around halfway po- through, but he's only there for one scene. Um, which one are you talking about? What movie? Afterlife. Oh, yeah. But then Winston gets the post credit scene too, so it's it's all works out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, who was your favorite character in this one? Uh, probably Vinkman because he was the funniest. I'm not gonna lie, you know, I like those funny characters. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, may, probably Vinkman because, like I said, I got a lot of my my humor from him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's funny, so. But also, again, Winston, I love. I love the potential for his character more than what they actually used him for. I think I've said my piece on that. Yeah, you have talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. But that'll have to do it for us. Next, we're going to be going into Ghostbusters 2, the much maligned sequel. But does it, does, uh, it really earn that reputation? We'll find out. We will. So, Ghostbusters 2. The, uh... Much maligned sequel to the original, but is that is, is that fair to to call it a bad movie though? I don't think so. Mm, no, nah, I guess I don't either. It's it's not not really, yeah, you know. It's it's okay. So, Ivan Reitman returns to direct this follow up to the original. Also, of course, returning is Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Sigourney Weaver, Harold Ramis. Rick Moranis, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts, uh, amongst some others. Damn cat. He was strangling himself. Uh, we get some uh, new players this time around, too. We get Peter Bingnickel, who plays Janos. Uh, he's this creepy little European guy who's always hitting on uh, Dana. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it, my guy, but uh, you gotta chill. Yeah, I gotta learn how to take a hint. Of rejection. David Mar- Margulis returns as the mayor of New York. Kurt Fuller comes, but well, he doesn't come back. He uh, he stars as Harder Meyer, the uh, basically the uh, the replacement for uh, Walter Peck. Yeah, mm-hmm. the mayor's assistant or whatever it is. Yeah, he's not really likable, so he's. But he's not as dislikable as Peck, but I still don't like him much either. Yeah, I don't really care for him. Wilhelm von Hamburg plays Vigo the Carpathian, the main villain of this movie. And uh, I'm going to be honest, I didn't really care much for Vigo. He, his plan was kind of vague. His uh, motivations were kind of non-existent. And I didn't really, uh, I didn't really find him too interesting. Yeah, he didn't really do much. And, I mean, as a big villain... He wasn't much of a threat, it seemed, you know? I mean, granted, Gozer didn't really show up until the last 20 minutes of the first movie, but at, at, at least there, there's somewhat of a presence of him, her, them, I don't know, their mm, pronouns. Yeah, I don't know. You know, with, with, with Gozer, we get, the, we, well, for, we get those uh, dogs for one. Yeah, they're pretty scary looking. And we get some classic lines from them, too. But with Vigo, there's not much to to speak of, really. No, not really. Not a lot. Uh, Now, a lot of people have thrown shade at this movie. Uh, And we're going to do that, too. But let's talk about some stuff we do like, for one. All right, that sounds good. What do you like? Uh, Well, I like that we get more... More Winston this time around. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he does have a slightly bigger role than in the last movie or the first movie. The Ghostbusters are also still pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's lots of jokes that I uh, found myself, you know, given a little chuckle at. I talked about how I didn't care for uh, Lewis in the first movie, but here he's a little less annoying, a bit funnier. I agree with you. I think he is uh, 
I think he's funnier this time around. So, um, yeah, so that, that was good. He wasn't quite as annoying. Yeah, so any, anytime we get a, a, a character who becomes not so annoying as they were in the last movie, that's always a nice time. But, um, yeah, let's get to the stuff we don't like. Well, first off, we start the movie with the Ghostbusters having... Well, they've gone bankrupt because uh, they got, got hit with so many lawsuits from uh, the last movie. Now, I would kind of understand that if it's from a, the perspective of all of the damage that they caused, which, to be fair, was quite a bit. But uh, also, apparently, nobody believes in ghosts. Like, they thought they all just made this stuff up. Huh? Yeah, that was one of my big problems with this movie. Um, like, everyone... What was this, five years ago? Is that what About. they said? Um, saw, you know, them defeat this giant Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Amongst all the other ghosts that were yeah. seen throughout the city. Yeah, and now, five years later, they're like, oh yeah, um, there's no such thing as ghosts. We're going to take you to court, and if you try to say there's such thing as ghosts, it's just not going to help you. If you try to be Ghostbusters, uh, you're going to go to prison yeah, it's like, I just, I didn't really get that. Yeah, that was a bit silly, I think. Yeah, I thought so, too. Uh, well, Bill Murray would ha- would would agree, because he, uh, he didn't really care for this movie, either. Yeah, I mean, I could see why people have their problems with this movie, for sure. Huh, interesting. The actor who played Vigo was also upset where, where, when he learned that all of his lines were dubbed over by Max von Sydow. That's, that's kind of interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Rick Moranis also didn't like this movie either. <laughs> lots, of, lots of dislike to this movie. Well, it, it, it took quite a while for Ghostbusters 3 to get off the ground, and I think some of that could have had to do with the fact that this movie was so poorly received by audiences yeah that's probably uh why it took so long which on the one hand is kind of a shame since i mean i would have loved to see uh, a ghostbusters 3 with the four original ghostbusters all together but in a way we did get uh, a, a ghostbusters 3 with all three of them because in the mid to late 2000s we got a ps3 game and xbox 360 i assume that was basically a new Ghostbusters movie. It had all the original uh, Ghostbusters come back. Heck, even uh, William Atherton came back as Dickless. I'm not sure if Scorny Weaver or Rick Moranis showed up again, but at the very least, we had uh, had Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, um, Dan Aykroyd, and and Ernie Hudson. So, in a sense, that could be the, the uh, third Ghostbusters movie with all three, all four of them. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. What year did you say that was? Uh, about 2008, 2009, I think. Oh, sounds interesting. Uh, of course, we got an actual Ghostbusters 3, but it's a passing of the torch sort of thing, which isn't bad if it's done well. And Ghostbusters Afterlife was done well, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Yeah, that's for later down the line. Um, huh. You, you want to know something funny, actually? What? Uh, the kid at the birthday party who tells uh, Ray that his dad thinks that the, that you guys are full of crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was Jason Reitman. Ivan Reitman's son. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Director of Thank You for Smoking, uh, Juno, and Ghostbusters Afterlife. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So, some stuff which... Uh, that... You know, some what could have been stuff. Um, let's see. Um, none of this is very interesting to me, actually. So let's oh, skip that. Okay. It's just talking about, like, different th- things that could have happened in the movie, like taking place on top of some sort of skyscraper or something, or going into another dimension, which, eh. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, do you have uh, anything... Anything to say about Ghostbusters 2? Honestly, not really. I don't have a lot to say. Um, Again, I understand why people do have problems with this movie. 
Um, it definitely doesn't live up to the first movie at all. No, but at the same time, it's also not a bad movie. It's just very aggressively mid. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I there are there were some parts that I thought were funny. Um but yeah, just it's eh, you know, it's just there. Eh. Yeah, pretty much. It's not as good as the first one, but it's better than what came after it, so that's a bit of a preview for how I feel about twenty sixteen. Yeah, um, I still have to watch it, which I'm sure we're about to do. Yes, we are. Um, so, final thoughts on Ghostbusters 2? Okay, not not so great. Uh, could have been better, but better than other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's about what I ha- would have to say. All right, next comes Ghostbusters 2016, or Ghostbusters Answer to Call, as it was called in some areas. Hmm. All right, let's watch it. Yeah. <sighs> Ghostbusters 2016. So this movie was uh, some was uh, quite controversial before it came out because, uh, well, for a few for a few reasons, uh, we had. Some people who were upset that we were getting a uh, pointless remake of, of of a movie, which this was a pointless reboot, remake, whatever. And then we had other people who were taking offense of the fact that it was all women in this movie. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was a vocal minority, though. I'm pretty. I don't think that everyone who didn't really care for how this movie looked was sexist. Yeah, I don't think so. I, If I recall, I mean, I didn't really care about it at the time, so I don't really remember, but I do uh, think that most of the backlash I saw was just because uh, Ghostbusters was being remade into this movie that, yeah, was unnecessary, and I think people were upset about that, so you know how it is. And... This was after years of Bill Murray holding up production of Ghostbusters 3 because for some reason or another he just didn't want to do it. It wasn't until after Harold Ramis' unfortunate passing in 2014 that this remake got any sort of uh, got off the ground. <sighs> and then he and then, and then they all decided to come back for this one. We can you tell I'm upset that I that I don't like this movie? Yeah, I can tell. It's pretty clear. <laughs> I don't like this. But I don't feel angry about it. I just feel disappointed. Mm. I will say this. Um this was my first time watching it. Um and I don't think it was as bad as what I was expecting. I feel like you really, really bad mouthed it, so I was like setting my expectations really low. Um, but there were, it wasn't all terrible. I will admit, it was. It, there were a lot of very cringy parts, a lot of cringy humor that um, a lot of it. They were trying too hard during a lot of it, but you know. Um, I guess I would, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> let's get to the cast. Yes, yes, this let's movie, get to the cast. This movie stars Kristen Wiig, uh, Melissa McCarthy, Kate McKinnon, and Leslie Jones as the four Ghostbusters. I don't care what their names are. Do you? No. Not really. Uh, also in this movie is Gabe from The Office. I didn't know he was in this. Yeah, he's not in it for very long. But he provides one of the one of the funnier moments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for a little bit. Charles dances in here too for a couple scenes. And why are you here, sir? You are better than this. I really do not know who that guy is. He he was Kristen Wiig's boss at at the college. Yeah, but um, I don't Charles dance. I don't know. He was the he was the human bad guy in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. I remember him. We we watched that not too long ago. Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, Neil Casey plays this really pathetic human villain. I really don't care about him. I guess we're supposed to think he's sympathetic, but I just I think I I don't feel sorry for him at all. I just don't like him. And I don't think it was in- intended that way either. I think he was, like I said, I think we were supposed to feel some sort of sorry for him, but I don't. Yeah, uh, that's another thing I forgot about. That, the uh, he's the like main bad guy, but yet uh, a, very, a very weak villain for this movie. Chris Hemsworth plays the Janine role, the the secretary, and he's kind of funny sometimes i guess but other times he's just so stupid i'm i'm curious as to how he made it this far in life uh he was my favorite character i will say that uh the original ghostbusters make cameos bill murray does so does dan Aykroyd and ernie hudson that was pretty fun uh, for some reason, the voice of Cotton Hill is also in this movie. That was weird. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. I didn't notice that until you mentioned it. But yeah, Andy Garcia plays the mayor in this movie, and he does provide the funniest joke with where he gets all pissed off at being compared to the mayor from Jaws. That was funny. I did. Th- I did laugh at that. Yeah, he. It. Yeah, he. It touched a nerve whenever. He was compared to the, the Jaws mayor. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver and Annie Potts also made cameos in this movie. And I'm seeing here that Brian Baumgartner also made a cameo in this movie. I'm going off of the IMDb page. I didn't notice him, but eh. Uh, no. I, I, I don't recall. Anyway, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. Okay, let's 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 ha- let's try to have a bit more life in us. Okay, okay, Tyler. Yeah, I think it's mainly you. You sound like you're on your deathbed. Well, ghosts. Ah, I get it. Okay, let let's talk let, let's let's talk about some of the things we did like because there's some. Uh, it was occasionally funny, like I said, the, uh, the Mayor Jaws 2 joke, not Jaws 2, Jaws Mayor joke, that was funny. Uh, Kate McKinnon is the only, is one of the only main cast members who has any sort of life in her. Yeah, she does have the most distinctive personality. Um, also, like I said, I liked, uh, Kevin. Yeah, he was funny sometimes, but other times he's just too dumb. Kristen Wiig is too much of a sti- her, her character is too much of a stick in the mud, and the less I say about Melissa McCarthy and Le- Leslie Jones, the better. They were not, they 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 were not entertaining at all in this movie. To be fair, you're you're not a fan of them in the first place, so maybe if you were a fan. Well, that would have changed your mind. No, I'm not a fan of Melissa McCarthy. I'm, I like some stuff that Leslie Jones okay, has done. Okay, okay. Like she's she's pretty funny on SNL. Yeah. I was just trying to maybe get you know some more positive things going. Like the these are funny actresses and Melissa McCarthy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, the, uh, yeah. So they they they. They've been funny in other things, and Melissa McCarthy, so it's just this, yeah. that. Yeah, they like. Yeah, you're right. They have been funnier in other things. I think it was uh, a lot of the jokes were, yeah, they just didn't really hit very well. Uh, kind of cringe, a lot of it. You know, just jokes that were trying too hard to get a laugh, and it's just like, eh just makes it not funny yeah now all of that aside there is one thing that I definitely do want to make clear 
okay, if you at any point after this movie came out decided that you felt the need to attack these actresses for being in this movie, then you're kind of a piece of crap. Yeah, I agree. There was a lo- there was a lot of like actual harassment and you know bullying online of you know uh, of of these the people who were in, in this movie involved with it, and no matter what you think of the movie, that's just not right. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, I'm not a fan of Melissa McCarthy, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna go cyber bully her. That's just not right. No, you wouldn't do that. And just yeah, if 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 you don't like the movie because you don't think it's funny, then yeah, me too. Okay, join the club. Not a lot of people think this is a very funny movie. If you do like the movie, that's fine. I'm glad that you got any sort of enjoyment, any got some sort of enjoyment out of this that I wasn't able to get. Yeah, mm-hmm. you like what you like. Um, we don't care. And if you if you dislike the movie because it's it stars women in it. Well, then I, I think that you're a, a far more vocal minority than, you know, the, the news media would, would have us believe. But I, I do think that there are some people who didn't like it because it had women in it. Oh, yeah. I bet there were. I could see a lot of people. Well, maybe not. I could see people not liking it for that reason, not wanting to watch it for that reason, uh, which is, is pretty dumb. However, like I said, there are some people who saw the trailer for this movie and it just did not look appealing to them. They thought that does not look like it's going to be at all appealing to me. So I'm just not going to watch that. One person in particular was James Rolf, who many of you know as the angry video game nerd. He uh, before this movie came out, he made a video detailing about how this doesn't look like something he'd be into so he's just not going to watch the movie. And he 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 uh, had to do this because it's well known that he's a pretty big Ghostbusters fan. He uh, did reviews on the NES games of the first two movies. Plus, he, he's made his feelings on the franchise pretty clear throughout the years. And all sorts of people all over the internet started attacking him. Like, uh, at one point, Patton Oswalt w- was uh, getting getting on his ass for it for some reason. Mm, that's odd. And so did Dane Cook, but nobody cares what Dane Cook thinks since it's not 2006. I couldn't even tell you who that is, if I'm going to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you, know, you know how James Rolfe t- um, handled all of that? He probably didn't care. He didn't say a th- single thing. Yeah, I, I wouldn't care either, yeah. Like at no point was his criticism towards this movie based on the fact that they are women. The only time he mentioned the gender of the characters was in saying that we'd have to to refer to this one as the female Ghostbusters movie. That was it. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people do that. They refer to this one as the the girl Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. So personally, I did not. I don't think this movie is as bad as some people think, but I still don't like it. Yeah, um, I'll probably never watch it again, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, It's just, yeah. But not my thing. New. But, um, so, right right after this movie came out, uh, I was working at Six Flags in, uh, uh, in Gurney Mills, Illinois. Gurney, not Gurney Mills. That's the mall. Gurney, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> Six Flags in a mall. <laughs> I mean, you 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 laugh, but there's there's a roller coaster in at the Mall of America. I yeah. Anyways, I was working at the Six Flags, and I I forgot which which ride I was working on at the time. I were I was between two different rides when I was working there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, and I saw this girl with like this um. It was like she was wearing this Ghostbuster shirt. It was like uh, one from the you know the 2016 movie, and I asked her about it, and she said that she really enjoyed it. So, you know, if it if it's uh, if, if if this movie is giving something for you know little girls to enjoy, then that's fine. Yeah, 
Definitely. I just wish it was a better movie. Yeah. Like I said, I wish it was funnier. I, I wish the humor was more my style. And uh, I wish there was a better villain. That too. Yeah. Here, Here's one of my b- biggest problems with this movie, though. It, it seems like all of the characters in this movie are just too cartoony. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. In, in the original one, we have a somewhat realistic world, and the Ghostbusters are the are the weird ones. Yeah. Here, everyone's weird, so it doesn't really it it, it doesn't really lend itself to to the comedy when it's when everyone is like this. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, that is a problem. Also, yeah, some of the main characters I think needed to have stronger personalities as well. Yeah, and just general in general, funnier jokes. Yeah, not cringy, do- uh, cringy jokes. Yeah, we spent a good ten minutes throughout the whole runtime where Kristen Wiig is just thirsting over Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, think of something else. Yeah. I mean, I get it lady, but yeah, come on. I, I get it, but let's, let's do something, you know, a little funnier, you know, maybe some, some funny jokes. He's hot. I get it, yeah. but come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The movie spends way too long on that. I think. And they they didn't the the original didn't have to do that with Janine because she was funny consistently. Yeah, um, yeah. So big difference there. And same thing with the Ghostbusters. They the the originals had much better chemistry with each other. Oh, I agree. Yeah, um, they did have pretty good chemistry. Um, which I mean. I feel like the main cast of this movie, they work together well, but I don't know. It just kind of seemed like something was missing. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, at least we got Afterlife after this. Mm-hmm. We did. So, uh, Rick Moranis was asked to make a cameo along with the other crew, but he declined saying that he didn't want to spend one day of shooting and make a, making a cameo for something he did 30 years ago. Mm, fair enough, I guess. Which, Rick Moranis is very selective about his roles these days. He's not, he, he's not retired. He's just a lot more selective, especially after the death of his wife back in the 90s. Hmm. That's unfortunate, but yeah, I don't. I couldn't even tell you what the last movie he was in was. Uh, the last thing I saw him in was Brother Bear Two. Oh, I didn't even know he was in that movie. Well, he was in the first one. Was he one of the mooses? He was one of the mooses. Okay, yeah, I think I did know that then. One of the the mooses, the meese, the moose. That was back in two thousand (laughs) six. That that's been quite a while ago now, yeah. Also, um, okay, this r- these this were also uh, Rick Moranis' opinion on the remake in general. He says, "I wish them well. I hope it's terrific, but it just d- makes no sense to me." Oh, okay, that was in regards to his cameo. Oh yeah. Okay, but overall, he did wish them well. I, I mean, yeah. Anyways, I. Yeah, as you can tell, and as I've clearly said, I don't like this movie. It's look if if I had to rank the Ghostbusters movies now, this would definitely uh, go straight to the bottom. Straight to the bottom. Yep, straight down there. What about you? How, uh, like, yeah, just get, give me your general thoughts on this. Yeah, I would say I would put this one on the bottom too. Yeah. Right. Or as well, the bottom as well is what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's on the bottom. It's on the bottom? Yeah. Not the top? Nope. Cool. Unless it was opposite day. It's not. Then it's on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, unless you have anything more to say on Ghostbusters 2016 or Ghostbusters Answer the Call, as they, uh, it was called sometimes. Hmm. Um, no. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> 
Sorry. Well, next we have the uh, the real Ghostbusters three. What? Nothing. Okay. Keep going. The real I'll Ghostbusters three next is Ghostbusters Afterlife. Mm-hmm. On Coming. To... Oh, sorry. On to the next movie. That's, that's good. After years of waiting, uh, we were finally given what is more or less Ghostbusters three in the form of Ghostbusters Afterlife. In late 2021. Yeah, I think you could call this one Ghostbusters 3. It, it basically is. More or less, yeah. It's essentially Ghostbusters 3. It's, it's another continuation of uh, you know the original characters and all that. So, yeah, it's Ghostbusters 3. Yeah. Um, the main characters do take, you know, um, they step aside for uh, new New char- new and younger characters to come in. Well, uh, well most of them don't show up until uh, the the final fifteen. Yeah, minutes. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They're they're not in it very long, but they are in it. So we do get another scene with uh, Ray towards the middle, and a couple po- uh, mid and post credit scenes featuring both uh, Vankman and uh, Winston, and also another with Janine. Yeah. Um, which is kind of nice. Anyways, so the plot of this movie is Egon just died, and his his daughter and his grandkids are basically checking out his house in Oklahoma where he was living because he was preparing for the eventual return of Gozer. Yes. Um, he left them their, his house and all his equipment, so... Um, Yeah, they go to the house. They don't have anywhere else to go, so they gotta stay there for a while. Yeah, especially since uh, his his uh, daughter just got evicted from her place, so that's gonna be a bit. uh, That's that's not gonna be a bit. That I mean, you might as well just take the house at that point. Yeah, that's what I would do. So this movie stars Carrie Coon as Callie, Egon's daughter. Uh, and the, the timeline for this is a bit, uh, a bit wonky, given that she would have been born a little bit before, um, before the original Ghostbusters in 1984. So, uh, judging mm. by Carrie Coon's age, uh, 81, it, it, it lines up fine. I guess so. Yeah. Um, it, it's close enough that, yeah, it's believable, you know? Yeah. She was born in 1981, so... It makes sense. Was I guess it was never really stated whether Egon was married or not, or maybe at that point he was divorced. Yeah, um, I don't really remember. He his relationships were never really talked about that much. Not really. Janine was really was thirsting over him though. Which can you blame her? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he never really reciprocated too much. I guess. No, it never seemed like it. I mean. I, I mean, at that point, I, I would have thought that Egon didn't know what sex was, but, you know, you know he was just on that Sigma male energy. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no, no, he just, he, he's like his, his granddaughter. He's really into science. Mm-hmm. Science is his mistress. And wife, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Rudd plays um, Mr. Gruberson, the summer school teacher who... Is a real big Ghostbusters nerd, and I'd say he's a bit of a an audience surrogate for us. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he knows all the traps and everything, and uh, he recognizes the ghost trap as soon as uh, 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 as soon as he sees it. Phoebe. Phoebe. I was, for some reason, I wanted to say Penelope, <laughs> but yeah, as soon as Phoebe brings it in. Phoebe is played by McKenna Grace, and. Uh, she's she's uh, of course Egon's granddaughter, and she's I'm not I'm not gonna lie, she's a pretty fun character. I think she's funny. Yeah, um, I like her. She's a nerdy, slightly autistic. Yeah, um, a nerdy but cool um, girl. So it's it's nice to see a little girl interested in science. Finn Wolfhard plays her older brother Trevor. Uh, Logan Kim plays her um, a friend she meets at summer school, 
the podcast, and he's called that because he has a podcast with only one subscriber. So uh, suddenly, I don't feel so bad about uh, our 19. <laughs> I know. We have way more than one. <laughs> we have 19 times that. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Uh, Celeste O'Connor plays Lucky, a uh, girl that Trevor is crushing on hard at his new job, but turns out she has a boyfriend. But he's okay with that. They could be friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're pretty cool. The original Ghostbusters, of course, show up again. Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Ernie Hudson reprise their roles as Venkman, Ray, and Winston, respectively. Annie Potts and Sigourney Weaver also return as Janine and Dana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where was Sigourney Weaver? Uh, in the uh, in the mid credit scene, you were oh yeah, you were getting that uh thing out of your eye when, you, when I, that came on. I had an emergency cat hair uh, get under my contact, and that hurt, so I had to run away. Uh, Bob Gutton and Ivan Reitman uh, are the body doubles for the for for Egon and his ghost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. J.K. Simmons plays Ivo Shandor, the. Uh, guy who built the, the uh, building that Dana was living in in the first movie, and the guy who built this whole town that Egon was living in at the time of his death. Yeah. Uh, and also, Olivia Wilde plays Gozer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Afterlife. Uh, like I said, this is basically Ghostbusters 3. We got it after years of waiting. Uh, it, was, it was over 30 years since Ghostbusters 2, I believe, and I mean, I guess five years since Ghostbusters 2016, but that really has no bearing on the on the canon of any of this, so it doesn't really matter in the whole scheme of things. Yeah, the Ghostbusters 2016 doesn't really count as a continuation of uh, the main story, so it's kind of it's kind of different. Yeah, it's kind of like with when uh, Rob Zombie remade Halloween, but then. 11 years later, they just decided to continue on from the original Halloween. It's yeah. sort of like that. Yeah, it is like that, yeah. Actually, to be honest, this is gonna, this is going to sound kind of contradictory to what I was just... to how much I was bad-mouthing Ghostbusters 2016, <laughs> but I'd rather watch that than Rob Zombie's Halloween. All right. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we uh, didn't have to watch that movie then. Oh, we, we might do it one of these yeah. days. He he made two go two Halloween movies and they're both not great. We'll see, we'll see. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So a lot of things were holding up the production of Ghostbusters three. Whether whether it's be, um, Dan Aykroyd. Uh, having trouble with writing the movie or uh, Bill Murray and Harold Ramis had a decades long feud going on after, uh, after they made Groundhog Day. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, it, uh, Bill Murray was going through, uh, some tough times at the time and he was clashing with Harold Ramis. So they didn't speak for, like I said, decades. Dang. Yeah. They, they did finally reconcile right before Held Ramis' death. Well, that's good, yeah. I, I would feel bad if, he, if they didn't make up before that. So that was also a contributing factor, but also the fact that Bill Murray just flat out didn't want to do it. Mm, yeah, that does throw a wrench in the problem. Yeah. But it is what it is, I guess. We finally did get it. Unfortunately, it wasn't until after Harold Ramis' passing. So we're we're down a Ghostbuster, unfortunately. But for what it is, I think they did a wonderful job. Yeah, I think so, too. The director of this is, of course, Jason Reitman, the son of Ivan Reitman. You know, the uh, the original Ghostbusters fan. Yeah, it makes sense that he's passing on his torch to, you know, his son. And... Now, this movie came out a little bit before Ivan Reitman died, and he was said to have really liked it. Well, that's nice. I mean, I would hope, I would hope so. He helped make this movie. Yeah, I would hope so, too. Oh. I'm having allergy problems. My nose keeps itching. Sorry. S- sounds like you need to get good, mate. I'm, I'm sorry. Is that my fault? Yes, it is. 
Anyways, back to the movie. Back to the movie. Um, so overall, I quite enjoyed it. What about you? Uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty enjoyable. I like the characters. I think they're uh, a good, you know, a good set of characters to, you know, replace the original. I I think so too. Uh, I like these kids. They're. Um, I mean, my least favorite of this new batch is probably Trevor, but I think that may only be because we didn't get quite as much of him, so he, we didn't get to see him develop quite as much as his sister. Yeah, that's true. The focus was more on the sister. And in this one, he's 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 also a bit of an angsty teen, so yeah, he's going to be a bit annoying, but that's accurate for, for a character like him. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the next one, Frozen Empire. Yeah, me too. I'm ready to see it. Okay. So, not not only what did Ivan Reitman approve of this, but Harold Ramis' family also approved too, uh, including, um, including his daughter. Oh, well, that's nice. I'm glad that's good for them. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's really nice that that they were so intent on getting the approval of you know his family and all that. Considering, I mean, if I, I well, I mean that goes without saying. I don't really need to explain why that's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, that was very important for the movie. Okay, so, fun fact, uh, when when Callie goes into the hardware store and she's talking to this old old man in there, that's Carrie Coon's actual husband. Yeah, I thought that was kind of funny because he seems pretty old compared to her, but oh well. Yeah, but she's also in her 40s, so at that point, does the age gap really matter too much? Not really. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look up how... how old the age difference is between them i can't speak today what's wrong with me uh you probably just what's wrong with you every day true Mm -hmm. okay so she's 43 he's 58 that's not too much Uh, no that's not too bad he he just unfortunately didn't hasn't aged as well yeah he he looks quite a bit older i mean we can't all be keanu reeves so let's cut the guy a break it's true yeah we can't um, I'm right back by that. Any more fun facts? I I just called uh Jason Wright- Reitman the the original Ghostbusters fan. He he's apparently been calling himself that too. Oh, nice. So that's kind of funny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? Um. Um. So, like I said, there was quite a bit of trouble production. Well, I mean, ultimately getting to the uh, the actual filming of the movie wasn't that bad, aside from the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would throw that would that would give you some problems too. Yeah, but the 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 story for this movie was uh, they've been throwing ideas back and forth for around thirty years at that by the time this movie actually came out. Mm, that's quite a long time. Uh. At some at some points, Dan Aykroyd talked about bringing uh, actors like Chris Farley or Adam Sandler on to uh, be parts of the new team, mm-hmm. which that could have been fun. Yeah, I think I think that would have been funny. I mean, '90s Adam Sandler, heck yeah, man, he was he yeah. was funny back then. Yeah, classic. Uh, the script that they had, uh, basically Ghostbusters in Hell, uh, they they took parts of that and put it in that uh, Ghostbusters video game that w- was released in the late 2000s. Mm, very interesting. But ultimately we did get we get we did get this movie and like I said, I quite enjoyed it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fun, pretty entertaining. I like it. Yeah. So what to expect from Frozen Empire? Well, um New York's frozen, yo. Mm, yeah. 
Uh, I think it looks like a fun movie. Uh, I, I, I think I really do. I think it's going to be a really good time. I, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. What about you? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of going into it blind uh, because I don't know. You may have shown me the trailer once, but I really don't remember it. I don't remember the trailer um, either. To yeah, be honest. yeah, but that's okay. We'll go in and we'll just watch it and we'll have a good time. I think it's opening weekend for the drive-in, so that'll be fun. Yeah, if if all goes well, then we're gonna be seeing this at the uh, Chaffee Drive-in. Our, our, our usual hangout spot. So uh, go see it there if you want to want want a fun driving experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do it. I think that might have to do it for us for Ghostbusters Afterlife. Unless, well, who is your favorite of the new characters? Hmm. It probably was Phoebe, just because I liked that uh, she's a little silly, a little nerdy. Um. Uh, nerdy and quir- uh, quirky, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. She was a really fun and interesting character. And look at this: there was two, you know, uh, girl Ghostbusters in this movie, and nobody cared about that. Yeah, no. It's almost like that wasn't an issue that people were really too worried about in for 2016, was it? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I mean, granted this. Technically speaking, this movie did make less money than 2016, but given how it cost less, then it was ultimately more profitable. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Also, it was coming at the... I want to say at the end of the pandemic, but I mean, honestly, COVID is still happening, but it's just not as, you know, worried about now as it was a couple years back. I, I would say we're not in a pandemic anymore, for sure. Anyways, it was still at at in that general uh, general area of time, th- I guess. Yeah, it was. It's still at that time, so people weren't going to the theater as much as they are now. I mean, given from the state of blockbusters last year, people still aren't really going to the theater as much as they used to. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. But that's a that's a discussion for another day. Yeah, another time. Or you could just watch someone else talk about it, too, honestly. We're probably not going to get around to talking about why a lot of stuff in 2023 just outright bombed. That's whatever. Yeah. Anyways. That will have to do it for us. Next time, we're probably going to be talking about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Yeah. Is it going to be in the same video? No, no, no. Oh, oh. No, this is going to be a different thing. Oh, so I can say see you next time? You can see say oh, see you okay. next time. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>